Say that again. Okay. Because it's making you smile and it's making me smile <laughs> and it's pissing everyone off. But I've just come from Byron Bay where um, where we had one person uh, one person that tested positive that cancelled. And that one person who was a stripper and good on him because you've got to make a living. But that person um, cancelled a 15,000 person fucking festival. <laughs> He must feel like if he didn't get laid that night, right? Yes. He certainly fucking got fucked uh, in other ways. Can I swear? <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever you want. Laney's here, Hello. stand-up comedian, mm. Um, mm. author of a fantastic book I read. We'll talk about that later. Oh, good. Okay. And this is the this is the second take that we're doing on this. I was like a guinea pig, you know? Well, uh, yeah, I fucked up recording last time, but... Now I'm like triple checking to make sure I don't screw it up, but yeah. That's right. But you know I'll always be back. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Huge supporter of the Cats. <laughs> 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 not the not the footy team either. <laughs> <laughs> so just get that straight. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. It's been ages. Ten weeks, um, which which in this day and age is, is ages. Mm. Yeah. Are you doing gigs down here? Um, no, no one will have me. I'm like a, no one knows my name anymore. You go you, away for No one needs to know your name. You just <laughs> need to jump up and say funny stuff. Oh, I can do that. But, um, but no, but, but because I think because of COVID and everyone's gagging to get on stage that if I don't live here, I'm, and I, I totally understand it's like the comedy etiquette. If I don't live here, I'm at the bottom of the rung. No. No? Right. Just go to the expert at 10 o'clock. Oh. Sign up, get on there, get up, get on the brunny tonight where we're going after here, oh, no, which the, is every Monday. The Bergie, the Bergie. The Bergie Seltzer. Mm. Funny near the brunny, it's called if you want to Google it, but that's a great stand-up club. Is that the same thing? It's the same guy, yeah. But oh. some idiot crashed into a fire hydrant at the brunny, which leaked all this water inside the pub, and now it's like a huge insurance claim no one wants to pay out, so... <laughs> Funny, the brunny is destined to become fucking apartments Uh, by some real estate magnate because no one's settling in court. No one wants to settle. No one wants to fork out the money to fix it. Which is weird because someone paid $12 million to um, the SV to do that up and no one fucking slammed into anything. Oh, Oh, except for, you know, (laughs) they vomited and (laughs) shot up and did all sorts of other stuff. But, um, yeah. Oh. Sorry, that was, that's all hearsay. I have no idea if that actually happened. You can say that. Yeah, I vomited. <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> At the SB. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, so, yeah, it's good good to be back. I've The comedy scene up in um, in Northern Rivers. So Byron Bay? Well, it's, it's... What is Northern Rivers? So, the Northern Rivers is like an umbrella term for anything that kind of is from... Um, Maybe Ballina up north. So, yeah, it's all the rivers that are in the north that come together to to form a community of hippies and um, extremists and anti-vaxxers. No, they're not all anti-vaxxers. I must say that this whole outbreak of one person... Yeah, so one person literally shut the whole fucking festival. They were... It was, it was, a, it was a preventative measure, in, in inverted commas. It screwed a lot of people up, that's for sure. Heaps. But um, the community came together and basically all the food vendors that would have lost, that paid so much money to have all this food there for five days, banded together and um, have kind of gone to all the vendors, make your food up, we'll just buy it anyway and we'll bring it home. That's great. So, yeah, that's kind of like the – it's kind of like – the essence of, of up there, but I don't know if you've seen that there's a Netflix special being done on, it's called Byron Bays, B-A-E-S, and apparently Bays is millennial for babes. Wow. Don't tell me it's like a Baywatch type of show. It's a fucking, it's a, it's a net, it's a doc, it's a Netflix documentary on the influencers, the Instagram influencers that have now moved up to Byron. And Where have they come from? The US? No, just. Just everywhere, but but that's how they make their cash. I don't know much about the influencers, but they have all these followers and big labels like pay them mm. big money to do reviews on their products and post about all that, and that's their living. So that that excites me and freaks me out at the same time. I mean, 
<laughs> you know, gone are the days where we have to impress three people from Channel 7, 9, and 10 oh, to get on TV. We can do our own thing as, as comedians. Yeah. And you can say whatever you want on stage. You'll carve out your audience. It may be small, but it doesn't matter. You've got... I can get up and do a podcast on Star Trek and I'll get people listening. I've always wanted to do something on Star Trek. Do you want to do that now? Your body language is saying, I'm not comfortable. Can you look at your arms? Yeah, I often, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. I was just letting you know. I am very comfortable. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing that. I like doing this. But yeah. All right, you can cr- you can cross your arms. That's all right. See, no, I'm all right. I know I'm intimidating. That's no, I'm not intimidated at all. No? All right. No, yeah. very much no. Like, <laughs> very no. Couldn't be a more no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the Byron Bays and 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 the and the um the the little town is in a little bit of uproar and, and a bit of sadness about it that that Netflix who have moved up there by the way the so the 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 company have moved into that area Netflix headquarters yeah wow they've decided that the essence of Byron Bay are these people. And so the people that have lived there for 20 years and have tried to maintain and protect this, you know, quiet culture, this, you know, innovative, um, creative, um, loving, also other stuff, you know, like this, it's not all just hippie oriented. There's some bullshit in politics. Um, but they're a little bit disillusioned that, that Netflix has come in and gone, oh, wow, we can do a story on the fucked up bullshit of the people that have come and are influencing and doing nothing to help the community. Yeah, they're just there for themselves. Whereas 20, 30, 40, 50 years of people that lived in the community are there for the community, yeah? Investing, putting their energy, um, and these new people are just there to help thousands and millions of other people like support brands is is Byron I know you're not the best person to answer this but I'm going to ask it anyway do you think it's becoming it's going to become like a LA type of fakeness and lip filler women and well it's is it it's, 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 it's heading there, there. It's there. but t- 10 years ago it was a road trip to get some dope and and mushies and mushies and go surfing and chill out still can still can yeah, but it's losing that, isn't it? Like it's becoming very corporatized and branded and an image. Yeah, yeah, and the um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It's kind of like a watch this space mm. thing because you can still go there and experience that if you want to. But the surfing culture, um, the surfing culture is struggling a little bit only because there's so many people that come there to surf. They don't know the surf etiquette. You're a surfer, yeah? Well, I'm a beginner, yeah. So how did you... Okay, this is a question to ask you. How did you learn the surf etiquette? Because there's an etiquette out there on the water. And and as a newbie, you kind of have to come in. Same with comedy, yeah? I'm I'm a new age surfer. I'm a test tube baby. I learned how to surf park, a wave garden, a wave pool in Tullamarine. That's (laughs) how I learned to surf. Okay. So I cheated. I'm this new generation of surfers coming through, which is so weird. Um, I've never really surfed in an ocean. I've done all my training, all my popping up, all my carving, my skills, turning on a wave, all at the urban surf park in Tullamarine. I spent more money trying to stand up on a board than Christopher Reeve did, <laughs> the late great Superman. <laughs> like I... I'm a weird concoction of the new age surfer where a, a lot of real surfers are probably like, you're not an actual surfer until you're surfing in the ocean. But I do understand there's an etiquette. There's an etiquette. So you haven't come across that etiquette? No, because uh, it's very strange. In a surf park, you're all like in a queue on a runway, like oh. planes ready to taxi. <laughs> the, wa- the wave is generated and you go single file. It's bizarre to look at. Whereas out there in the ocean... Uh, I think you can't cut across a sur- uh, uh, there's an etiquette. Yeah, you can't you can't yeah, I don't, I because I'm not a surfer, I don't understand it, but I hear it and yeah, it's about not dropping in on someone else's. Mm. But when there's like hundreds of people there and you still have to maintain that etiquette, it's getting lost. Um and the locals are getting pissed off because Do the locals sorry to cut you off. Okay, go. Do go the ahead. locals have a spot because I know in Gunnamatta Back Beach 
which is behind Rosebud, um, the first car park is indicative of pro surfers and locals. The second car park is for tourists oh. and and bunny surfers like myself. Wow. They don't have that at Byron. Uh, no, no, nah. it's a free free for all wherever in the in the spots. Um, that would piss you off if you're a local. Yeah, and there's some beautiful um, Brazilian tushies. Um, in G strings now on a lot of surfboards, which are like yay female surfers, but they're beginners and they're coming out there with the back, the back, the pros, and as distracting as and as beautiful as they are, um, they're dropping in on wave. They don't know what they're doing, and it's like for the people that are out there to actually catch a fucking wave. Yeah, you know, it's like girls, you're fucking gorgeous, but you know, go go over there to the other waves. Where yeah. did you learn this from? Well, you just, when you're part of a community, you, you, you hear things. Okay. So this is what you, you're hearing. I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm hearing. Are you DJing at all in Byron? I, um, yeah, well, yeah, I started, a, I started a business to teach women how to DJ. Hashtag spin sisters. Um, and, and that's starting to take off. So that's, that's cool. really good. So at the moment we've got seven women, um, doing the course, just beginners. And, um, and so, yeah, I am getting slowly my name out there. It takes a while. Like I'm not young anymore. I'm not actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to edit that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like the more I move around because I kind of do five years in Melbourne, five years in Byron. And that's what I've done since I was 28 type thing. Like, yeah. Right. I, uh, it's, I, it's harder. It's getting harder. And have you always been going to Byron? Always. Wow. I paid for storage there for my shit to be there so, because I couldn't physically. Yeah. So I, I invested into a storage cabinet when I, just so that I, just so that I couldn't let go of the dream of one day going back there and living. Okay. So now you're there permanently, right? Mm, I'm there. I'm there till... I'm there till I'm spat out, yeah, or or decide to leave. Or what will spit you out? What will it take to spit you out of Byron? Um, an, an ex? No, 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 no. There's this, there's this code. If you follow the law of the land, yeah. Um, there's this because it's because it's a very very powerful indigenous area up there, yeah. That, um. There's this sort of underlying code that you you get drawn up there to heal or be or do something, yeah, in your life, shift something around, um, experience something, and that could be a lifelong thing or it could just be a a, a moment in time. Is yeah? this an indigenous dream time story? Well, or well, not dream time, but it's an indigenous quality that if you if you go to Byron, you're drawn there for you're drawn a purpose, there for a purpose, and that is either to heal or work through some or stuff to, yeah to your shadow side will get shown to you you'll, you'll go through some deep transformational stuff yep and that's kind of why i keep getting drawn back there because i come to the city i love it it's great it's fucking got this this allure to me that i love yeah um and then i go back there to sort of integrate it and then and then move and shift and become and just you know sort of just rest because the so, city's power the city's powerful in itself you say Melbourne's your nightclub and Byron's your backyard. Yeah, and yeah. Your home. The Sunday sessions. Sunday yeah. sessions. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you can do both. It's just fiercely expensive, but yeah. So that's why I say spit out. Like if I'm if I get if I've finished what I need to do, and there's it's a there's a struggle that starts to happen up there for me, which I'm familiar with, then I go all right. There's too much struggle. It's not flowing anymore. I try and find ways to push through it, and then I go fuck it, and I might go back to the city. Yeah. So anyway, there's an insight into that. Hmm. Mm. So yes, but just to finish that, to, like all comedians do, have to bring it back around the Byron Bay's thing about the in influences. It it'll be a it'll be a really interesting thing. Also, Hollywood is found Byron Bay as their new. Um, well, that's why filming. originally I thought it's going to be tainted. Now it's going to become this plastic city, like Vegas, or not Vegas, but like 
like California, like like Hemsworth is there, and all these other celebrities are bleeding in there now. And the community will won't give it up without a fight. How do you protect it? How do you stop that? No fucking idea. Because yeah, because there's so <laughs> much money, no. you can't stop money. No, I think I, yeah, that's why I say watch this space. The, there's a gorgeous stretch of Australia which I. I'm completely blown away by. I think it's Sunshine Coast to Gold Coast, right? Is that where Byron is in that stretch, or Byron's just below Sunshine Coast? Yeah, no, Gold Coast. So Byron, Byron is about um, forty-five minutes south. Ooh, okay. Of Gold Coast. <clears throat> if you're not, if you're not following my UK mates, it, it's a uh, it's it a up. gorgeous stretch of land. Look at it. It's up. so beautiful. Yeah. It's like where I want to retire with a sailboat. Do you have UK friends watching this that are in in lockdown? Yeah, yeah. It's brutal. Shit. First day the pubs are open today, though, for them. Wow. Any of them single? Uh, Yep. Lainey, hit her (laughs) up. Start a new life in Byron. (laughs) When you get out of lockdown. Mm? Weren't you seeing anyone? No. I see everyone, but not no one. Everyone and no one. I was going to say something about, okay, we were talking about this beer, right? So Johnny was talking about Ho Garden as being one of the, the beers that are associated with this label. No, no. I, I like I like wheat beer. So I started going down the path of Ho Garden, which is a wheat beer. Then I liked um, Blue Moon, which is a wheat beer. And then I found this, which is Argentinian. It's also a wheat beer, but it doesn't have the taste of coriander and orange peel that Ho Garden and... <laughs> Blue Moon does. So it's nice. I really like it. I took um, a slab of Ho Garden to uh, Rainbow Serpent one year. Mm. And one of my good friends is German. And he he lost his shit and laughed so much at me when he saw that I brought Ho Garden. I'm Why? Like, I love the taste. Why? He's like, this is the VB of Australian, like the equivalent of um, beer in wherever the hell it's from. He said, it's it's such low quality beer or whatever compared to other beers in their realm. Wow, so you've just rocked up to an Aussie barbecue with Fosters. Pretty much. Yeah. It's a <laughs> it's interesting how you have that. Um but it's about what well, yeah, like that, that's that's that to me when you peel it all back is m- the power of marketing mm. and what marketing can do to a brand. Like in um England, Stella Artois is a no-go beer. It's really? Because c- it's got 5% alcohol. It's considered a heavy. Strange as this sounds, all a lot of the beers, not all of them, but 90% of the beers, and I would know this because I gigged in so many pubs across the UK, their beers are 4%. And Stella sits at 5 and is considered a wife beater. <laughs> That's what they call it, a wife beater. And I had this joke for a short while when Stella Artois came up with 4%. I call it the wife threatener. <laughs> Um, so I'm glad you found that funny because a lot of people didn't. It's just a fucking joke. And um, yeah, so they had Stella Artois, no one touches. But over here, Stella Artois is considered, ooh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Foster's is common. But yeah, and VB over there is considered, wow, you've got VB. That's cool. So Ho Garden, now you know. But don't let it, don't, don't let it, abs- don't let it taint your love for it. Just because it's the equivalent of Foster's in Australia. Well, yeah, I just like the taste of this. It's just. Do you find it smoother and creamier? Uh, yeah, it is creamy. Yeah, not that I'm an That's expert wheat on. Beer. Cre- yeah. Does it's not as gassy? Wheat beer isn't as gassy, I'll, and it's slightly creamier. I'll report back later. I reckon it will be. <laughs> <laughs> just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I remember last the, when we did our first little. Um, podcast here, we were all over the whiskeys. Yeah, what were we drinking? Whatever what? you... Uh, I think we were having... Oh, Talisker 18, I think. That's the one. It was like an ashtray <laughs> and sea spray on the shores of a cold beach. Oh, love it. It was divine. It was good. It got us well and truly more than a little bit tipsy. Yeah. More than 5%. Yeah, I'm, it's like cask strength. It's like 47, so I'm getting back to that soon because it's getting colder now. Uh, you got to come visit me up in the warmer climate. Yeah, that would be nice. Do some comedy. 
I know people say that, but um, but they never follow through. But yeah. you know, well, um, I'm going to the Gold Coast at the end of May. Why gigs? Great. Mm. Why? Where? Who? And and just a promoter. I just booked uh, three days. Did he want a hot bald man on the lineup? Yeah, hot bald guy on the lineup. Couldn't get Jason Statham. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it got me. <laughs> Worked his way down the list. How fabulous. We'll talk off air on, on when I can come and how I can come and see it. Yeah, please do. That's great. So now there are people finding you and pulling you in. Well, I think he, he's a Melbourne guy, so he runs gigs up there now because he's looking to branch out. Because um, comedy's big up there. Yeah. Like, Queensland is big for comedy. I know it's Byron, New South Wales, but still, it's like too close to the border right yeah different there is comedy that happens there and i'm kind of just on the peripherals you know um and i've done a few gigs and it's great but i know that in brizzy and gold coast it's you know bigger there's just a bigger Mm. section of comedy happening that's ace yeah well done thank you so um i bet you you're looking forward to getting out of winter to go back up Mm. Um, I've enjoyed the Bray. I, uh, I live in the top of a warehouse now in, in a hot climate. They don't have, um, it doesn't, there's no insulation type thing. Whoa. So it's fucking hot. Do you have aircon? I do, but then you have to be earning enough to use the aircon. So I look at it and go, fuck, you'd be amazing. Like I turn it on for like half an hour and go and stand in front of it naked and go, that's amazing. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, that so is torture. I put on what I can afford. Yeah. And so anyway, it's, it's, it's what it is. Is it that expensive to run? Well, if you consider that. It's consecutively 27, 28, 29 degrees. And when you've got a tin roof, you know, when you've got a the warehouse roof, mm. like it just kind of accumulates heat. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you would be, you would be, it would be up there. It's, and I mean, I'm, I'm just presuming, are you still single? Yeah. So it's, it's more expensive to be single. Um, and no, that's not, don't you no? Know? No. If I was with someone, I'd be like. You know, probably having to go out for dinners and right, okay. movies and doing things and booking holidays together. and But that doesn't mean you'd be paying for it. Initially, I'd be paying probably, but then eventually it'd be 50-50. But still, I'd have to budget for it. That's the beautiful thing about be- being single and embracing a minimalist life. Mm. My life is very minimal. He's got a clock he won't get rid of. That sounds it's a mi- good clock. It, it ticks it, like a motherfucker. Yeah, it's a loud tick and tock. I get that. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're on mushrooms, the tick <laughs> is like a beating drum in a symphony and the tock is like, yeah, it just does your head in. But only now I focus on it because she brought it up. Yeah, it ticks like a motherfucker. Um, so minimalist as in... I'm peaceful, single now, like very peaceful, very blissfully happy because hmm. life is good. I go surfing. I work on my material. I do my podcast. I work at a pub part time. And you don't have to book I'm tickets l- to Club Med with your girlfriend. Yeah. 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 I don't even think is Club Med even a thing. I know. Nah, <laughs> Club Med was a thing. I don't even know what Club Med is, but it used remember? to be a running phrase. Hey, off to Club Med, Mr. Money. <laughs> yeah, it was a thing. <laughs> I don't know where I pulled that from. You'd you'd know this. I found a Leyland Brothers t-shirt. <laughs> and I wore it on stage and no one was like giving me the time of day. And only one person in the crowd came up to me afterwards and went, holy fuck, man, that's a Leyland Brothers t-shirt. I went, yeah, I found it in an op shop. And they're uh, like, that's so a Leyland joy. Leyland Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, do you remember that? I do. I was like five or uh, seven or eight. I'd come home from primary school and watch it. Mm. Just after Skippy. <laughs> Skippy, that could have been anything in your world, though. That could have just been a white people on television, not just a kangaroo. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> so it was a kangaroo, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just checking. Just checking. Um, so, so yeah. So, no, it is, it's, it's really delicious to be back in a climate where you don't know what the fuck you're going to wear. And... 
you go out in one thing and, and you're peeling shit off. It's fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. Does the mugginess make you lethargic and slowly erodes your ambition? Because <laughs> I just think if I ended up in Byron, I'd be in the hammock by six months with no dreams or goals, but just loving the weather, being blissfully... As soon as as soon as you're feeling like your dreams and goals are disappearing, you find the ocean and you dive into it and then you come out and go, Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get onto those dreams and goals. So that's the Oh really? Yeah. Does the ocean rejuvenate you? Absolutely. Yeah. It washes off it just it washes off everything. Right. So it's uh Do you swim in the ocean regularly? I have started to. This time around. Like I've lived there three times before and um, I was a bit more of a forest pixie the last time I was there. And then, um, so I didn't really live close to the ocean. And then other times I haven't been this close as I am now to the ocean. And now it's just like, whenever I'm feeling that fog, like sweep over me, I just go, okay, it's time to jump in the ocean regardless of. And, and it works. Yeah. It ju- You feel. 100% back into my body. Yeah. What does that mean more specifically? Like you haven't got stress anymore. You've found solutions to problems. Is that your incubation period being in an ocean? Some people meditate. Others take a couple of beers. So what does it, how do you, what does it make you feel? It's a good question. Um, I think, um, when the heat gets too much, the only place for me to go to, um, I don't know, shock me back into myself maybe because it's cold like it's well it's not cold up there but um being in the ocean and just even just floating on my back and letting the waves take me and and the current take me like it's just this surrender yeah yeah because it's it's been a hard slog doing the move from byron to uh, sorry from melbourne to byron and and just finding that flow that for me, the best place to do it in is the ocean because it just, it, you have to surrender to it. It's, it's, um, I don't know. So by surrendering, are you basically, by surrendering physically <coughs> in the water, floating on your back and letting the wave go over you, are you like mentally telling yourself you have to surrender? Like, are you mirroring that in your mind somewhere? And that's yeah. what makes you feel peace when you come out because you're like, it is what it is. And yeah, and I don't want to, sound like a bit of a wanker because i'm not uh well i, I can well, be. everyone's everyone's got a technique to yeah. work through shit i mean most of us bury it others hit the booze yeah to put it into the mask you know how all of us have that masculine and feminine side of ourselves so in order to relocate and move and just pack up one day and fucking move my life into another area different people different climate different all of that I had to grab onto a real masculine approach, yeah? And it was do, 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 go, 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 you know, strive, 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 succeed, succeed, money, fucking all that sort of stuff. And so the ocean just puts that feminine back into me as well. It's just like, ah, yeah, okay, fuck all that. Fuck all that. And just float and just smile and look at the clouds and just just yeah so that's what it does it just balances me back out again sorry sorry if that sounds like a wanker to some of the people out there no I re- it's fucking cool because i reckon there's a lot of people that want to know how you handle stress how to handle stress everyone feels it i mean i drink a couple of beers i go surfing uh, i do a gig i feel good after a gig and yeah i swim in the ocean that feels great i feel like a reset yeah you know yeah, I mean that's not the only. I'm not a I'm not a beach beach bunny by any means, but I do use it as one of the tools. Yeah, to um, just to get back into the feminine side of myself. Mm. Cause it's yeah, it's been it's just it's been tough. And UK people, I feels the feels. It's that you can't get to the ocean. Um, well, they can. They've got. Brighton, but I went into that water once in summer and it was the coldest fucking water I've been in and I'll, I vowed never to go in it again. Oh, really? Oh, fuck. It's not... That's one thing that would... 
I don't, I don't want to say anything negative. It's going to sound negative, but when I lived in England, I would hate to live on the coast somewhere in England because you've got this beach that can't be utilized in summer. Yeah, maybe it can for a few days of the year, but most days you can't jump into that water. If you had a wetsuit, yeah, you could, but it's just fucking cold. Mm. Mm. You know, and just... That's it, the Wim Hof style, though. That's, you know Wim Hof? No. Oh, show me cat. Um, Wim Hof, and I don't even actually know what he started as, but he's got a following now, millions and millions of people because he teaches a breathing method and his, um, his ethos on life is that you can, you can stay in this, um, health state by immersing yourself in cold water, like freezing, freezing water, ice baths. And he teaches you the technique of how to breathe. So you can immerse yourself into ice. He's climbed Everest in thongs. Um, no. Yeah. You now you're gonna go down a rabbit hole and 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 look him up. This motherfucker climbed Everest in flip flops. He's done. He's done lots of things in, in ice cold and and people no way. people vouch for this that they feel that they have these ice baths, um, and and they can feel the cells in their body coming alive again. So cancer patients, some cancer patients are, co- are told to do this kind of thing, to just shock the cells, shock the cancer out of their cells. And so their cells start to um, look at the, the the tumors as foreign. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's fascinating, but there's no fucking scientific evidence for it. Because if, if that was a cure for cancer, the, the cancer rates would be very low in Scandinavian countries. And Iceland would have virtually zero cancer people because they'd be just jumping off their piers. Bouncing off the ice and cracking through. You're going. At least I'm cured. I have <laughs> hypothermia, but I'm cured. <laughs> it, it, it's one of the, it's one it's one of the the things. But what do we get? Three bags of ice for ten bucks here. It would be expensive to have. Yeah, a, three, a, a bath every. Three bucks for a bag of ice. Yeah, I thought you meant uh, three, glass barbie. Ten dollars for three bags of ice. Yeah? Ten bucks for three bags of ice. At a at a at a servo. Yeah. Mm. Unless you've got a motherfucking massive freezer. Yeah. Anyway, look it up. Wim Hof. W-I-M-H-O-F-F. He's the dude that climbed it. I really want to check out this dude. Wim Hof climbed Everest in fucking thongs. Yeah. Board shorts? Yeah, yeah, shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Let's talk after. You you go, you, you, yeah. He's done a lot, lots of stuff. Like, like, because people get frostbite wearing gloves. But with this breathing. It's like minus 27 degrees Celsius. Even worse. I know. But people who do it say it's changed their life. Yeah. I try and have a shower, right? Warm shower, amazing, feel fucking, you know, so amazing in your warm shower. And I just I just try to turn the hot off and try and get 10 seconds with the cold. Yeah? And I'm, I go into my Jewish princess mode. Hmm? Think of your water bills. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, that's what that's my mum would do. <laughs> Think of the water bill. Yeah, <laughs> tell her to have cold showers then. Yeah, she would love it. Um, yeah. So anyway, but it 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 it. Uh, how what what time do we have? I know where we have to be. Um, it's five minutes to eight, <gasps> and we have to. What time do we have to be at the brunny? Well, um. I think they start at eight, but as comedy just doesn't always start on time. As no, we know. I reckon we've got another 15 minutes. Can I say on air that that shirt is great? My camo shirt? Fucking great. Yeah. Is it a newbie or do you... Do no, you... I got it. I got it in Germany like years ago when I was living overseas. Yeah. It's it's very G.I. Joe. It is a G.I. Joe shirt. Yeah. It's like camouflage, military, ready to go. So good. Ready where, for battle. Where are your guns? Um, <laughs> They're hidden under the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> now, is there anything you want to ask me? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We should talk about your book. Oh. If you don't mind. Yeah. Because I went into depth with your book last time, but uh, unfortunately I fucked up my technical ability to record it properly. But um, you wrote a book called Electro Girl. I did. Dealing, not dealing <laughs> with managing your life with uh, epilepsy 
rearing yeah. its head every now and then. And um, yeah, so so I gifted it to Johnny over the COVID period because mm. he seemed like he needed something entertaining to read, which it is an entertaining read. And we bonded over the chapter where I shat in a bucket and then had a seizure and it flung everywhere. So yep. I go into I go into graphic detail about kind of my um my denial and and what it took to hide that the fact that I had seizures um from from the public. I understood why there was denial. I mean you just wanted to do what every other kid was doing when you were eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You just wanted to go to Israel and party. Well, anywhere and party really. Yeah. Yeah, that just came up, but um, but it's still it's still um, sorry, I just did a, a Argentinian oh, burp, Arge- beer burp, <laughs> Argentinian wheat beer burp. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's it's yeah, it's been a few a few years in the making, but it's it's still very hard to get people to engage in the topic. So hard, so hard. What do you mean it's difficult to get people to engage in the topic? Well, because, I mean, you actually, you've had a experience with an ex that had epilepsy. So yes. it had crossed your radar. Yes, but mild form. Ma- not, not grand mall. No. Grand mall? Grand mall. Grand mall. I'm thinking of American shopping More. complexes. <laughs> yeah. Grand mall. Grand mall seizure <laughs> is the one where you traditionally see in Hollywood movies where they collapse and wiggle about. Yeah, nicely put. Froth at the mouth, wiggle about. Yeah. And uh, why I like Lainey is because in all of that, when she saw her grandma seizure <laughs> on video, because she got her boyfriend to record it, she didn't give a fuck that she was shaking around uncontrollably. She cared about her cellulite. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fucking bitch you are. <laughs> what a chick. It's, yeah, it's it's. Terrible, terrible. That oh, I didn't like for the first time I in years and years and years someone had filmed me because like actually having a seizure. This is what I wanted to see, yeah. And then he did it, and we were watching it, and all I could see was my cellulite on my thighs and that that shaking. Yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to go into. Oh my god, it's so hard. Could you imagine like for if you're like incapable of controlling yourself and you'd be like yeah because you have certain you have a couple of minutes before you know a seizure's coming so you can (laughs) if you're not comfortable with the people in a room you could excuse yourself go to the toilet lay some towels down if you know it's coming yeah yeah so this is a big deal for you for this guy to see that like you must have been in a really good place with him yeah i trust i trusted him i mean you you have to because yeah i've had I've had one night stands where it's happened and it hasn't been good at all. No, because if I would, hasn't th- been good. <laughs> I would think it was the fucking exorcist. Yeah, yeah, and but you know, it comes down to the fact that it was my fault that I didn't, I didn't prepare them because I was just, just going on my path, drinking and you know, take drugs and wanting to just have a good time, and that you know, um, that equates to the bedroom. Um, you would just want to have a good time. You don't really want to share with a, a, a one-nighter that this could happen because it, it could or it couldn't. And then, and anyway, so it, it has happened a few times and it's it's been devastating. Devastating outcomes. Can I pry? Please. What's a devastating outcome? Like what has been his reaction? Um... Well, luckily it hasn't happened. It's happened twice, and one 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 of them um, one of them did stick around till I came back to consciousness, and then he fucked off so quickly um, that as soon as he knew I was safe, like so, <laughs> you could you can always see in people's eyes when you come out of it, when you actually like come back to consciousness, who might have a PTSD like reaction and who who won't. Did yeah. anyone think you were coming? Like, did any alpha males go? Ah, oh, fuck yeah, I'm so good. No. No, okay. No. Uh, no. Did they? No, no, no. Um, and, and then another, another time, I don't even think they were there when I woke up. Yeah. 
This is in their place. No, that was in my place. Wow, they just... just it was too much. Wow. Mm. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Oh, well, look, I could... Off air, I could tell you a few other things. I don't really want to share those. But, yeah. But that's... But it all comes down to personal responsibility, yeah? I put myself in those situations. And this is not about the Me Too sitch, because it wasn't about the sex that was the problem. It was about... I didn't tell them that I had epilepsy and that could happen. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the consent was all there to have sex. That was fine. But the consent wasn't there for them to know what to do if someone had a seizure. Mm. So now do you? I do. I'm very transparent. If, yeah. If so you would say, look, um, you need to know something about me. I don't do one night stands anymore, so it doesn't really matter for yeah, that. Yeah, they're shit. They're fucking shit. <laughs> I hate one night stands. Ugh. It's awkward sex. Ugh. No, so so it, w- it would be a lot easier to have that conversation because there would be a build up of trust over a few, you know, dates or whatever, and then it would be fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, once bitten, twice shy type mm. thing. Yeah. Anyway, it does make for good comedy, and every. <laughs> I think all these all these things I've experienced actually I think now maybe that was just maybe I'd put myself through that just to write a fucking bit about it. You would know. Uh maybe. Yeah. I mean I think so. Because that means you're on the right track, right? I mean you're if you write about something then yeah, you're a writer essentially. You wrote a book, you're writing comedy yeah. all the time, you wrote a play, you turned your book into a play. So speaking you're of you're constantly which, writing. Speaking of which mm. where's your script? Yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's in there somewhere. It's like Brad's. Brad knows a couple of actors which I can't have access to, so he's put it out to them, and one out of the two has written back saying she's keen to do it. So okay. I, I can't, you know, but I don't know anything about that industry. But he said he, Brad Brad Oaks is a stand up comedian, and he knows a lot of people in the industry and acting as well. And he said I have to do something called a table read. When you write a play, you sit around a table with actors and do a table read. Each actor reads their own part out loud. And you're meant to find holes in the script and plug them and see what flows and what doesn't flow. So that's where I'm at now. Brilliant, actually. Mm. Then it makes it foolproof, really. really. Yeah. That's ace. Well done. Yeah, it's. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, I wrote a play about being on radio and a, a, my co-host... Had a live, have had an, had a, a pregnancy test live on air, and she said she wasn't going to keep the baby. And then, as you can imagine, Christian group, Christian groups and religious people rang up and started berating her and telling her she's a mole and a whore. And then um, other callers started ringing up and, of course, offering her support. So I just wrote about that. And it's great. I've read it. It's mm. amazing. It's a good writer. Um. Actually, being called a whore is 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 actually a term of um a, is a powerful word now. They've reclaimed that word. Good. Women have reclaimed that word. That's a yeah. good thing, right? Yeah, yep. Because yep. yep. I can be a stud. Can in, you? In not now, no, I can't. <laughs> but you know, I I'd like to think that in another. Yeah, men can be studs, <laughs> and women can be whores, and yeah. it's not derogatory. No, no, that's no. good. Yeah, it's powerful. Well, the stud. Yeah, I don't know. The stud, but don't they put studs down after they've sighed a few? <laughs> yeah, it's probably for our own good. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to sigh her if you foals, are you? Do they really put studs down? Well, they have their, they have their, you know, it's like anything in the in the industry of the studs are there for a reason. They they sigh a good 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 um, offspring, mm? Mm. and then once they're done, well, they're either taken to stud farms and fed. Fucking mackers, <laughs> <laughs> you know they've had their bit in the sun, yeah. Or or they might, yeah. If no one wants them or no one wants to like farm them, then they're probably bolted. Yeah. Ouch! Don't get bolted. No. Mm. Hey, before um we stop talking about your book, one thing I got out of your book which I enjoyed was how, uh, and you changed my thinking about Western medicine. I used to blindly visit a doctor and just ask him, tell him what's wrong with me and he'd give me a script. I'd go away and I'd take the medicine. Knock on wood, I haven't had any serious issues. 
but you've since taught me that you should have an invested interest in your condition because a lot of times doctors just look up the condition like a grid pattern see what medicine is required and dispense it and then scan your medicare card and move on to the next patient yeah and that was your experience for a large period of trying to manage your epilepsy yeah and and um sadly it's it's kind of still the the way that it that it works the medical industry i'm now in the medical cannabis industry yeah so i'm helping people who have um who have you know come to their limit with western medicine and gone there's just no answers there anymore so i've invested all these years and now nothing's changing and the fact is you know i mean this is a whole nother podcast but no talk about it please but the, the fact is that people like the western medicine approach because it provides them with an easy um response to mask the issues that they don't want to deal with yeah you got an example well Basically, that you, if someone's in pain, you throw an opioid at them. You throw an endone, you throw painkillers, you throw that, whatever. It's not actually getting to the bottom of why the pain's there. Mm. So they're, what they're doing essentially is giving you a script to deal with the symptom that you want them to help you with. And that's their job. Sure. It's like, I've got a problem, fix it. Okay, I'll fix it. And they don't go into the background of why the problem's there. A quick example before you go yeah. on. I had horrific back pain. I got thrown a lot of opiates and a lot of Valium, a lot of bullshit, rather than be put on a holistic approach, which I looked into later on, which was um, yoga, stretching, getting blood going in between the vertebrae in the morning, stretching my cartilage out, my spine, so that it could be have more range of movement just to help it. You still do that now? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So there's still like, there's still witch doctors out there and I shouldn't be called witch doctors because they're fucking geniuses and they still work with leech medicine and, you know, like, um, an old school, um, um, you know, like plant medicines that have, that are illegal in this country, but have, and not scientifically proved, but do work. That's not the industry I'm in, but, um, Yeah. Cannabis can also be, and this is kind of really important. I know we've only got minutes left, but cannabis is a great medicine. But if you're not going to work with that plant medicine and make the changes that you have to do, like it's not going to be a silver bullet. It's, you may as well go and get endone if you just want to get the cannabis to deal with the pain and not do anything different in your life, then you're wasting your fucking time. So there's, I'm trying to understand that this without doing any of like the obvious fucking jokes about taking cannabis and all that bullshit. But so I've got a condition. Let's say it's um, an obvious one, right? I've, I'm suffering from incredible agoraphobia, mm -hmm. and I I'm, I can't leave the house. I'm fucking stressed. Uh, I can't handle people. So does cannabis help me by calming me and? lowering my stress or is that isn't that just treating the symptom rather than the underlying cause of why i'm agoraphobic so in a nutshell the cannabis will speak to your endocannabinoid system which every living being has animal anything that has blood like running through its system has an endocannabinoid system what's so an endo endocannabinoid system what is that is basically the the a ma the main operating system in your body so it 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 aligns all the biological processes so, so it your keeps temperature my liver kidneys it, all in sync functions yeah and so stress and environment and the foods we eat and the people we hang out with and the waters we drink that is all going to put off um if it's not like if it's not good quality stuff that's going to shift your um, operating system to just like, like, I don't know, going off track. So the GPS, if you take the side roads kind of thing, yeah, it won't, it won't have the, the main, um, way to get to where you're going. It's going to go off on a side tangent and that side tangent is where all the disease starts happening. Yeah. 
So when you, so oh, like I said, we could have a whole nother podcast about this. But um, yeah. So so for an ag, for a person that's suffering maybe anxiety, the cannabis will assist the cannabinoid system to um, the endocannabinoid system to kind of find its way back to, to getting straight on track to going where it needs to go. Do they know how? Like do know, with science, do they know how it's telling the endocannabinoid system to realign itself? It's still a work in progress. But, but it's been proven. Proven and the trials are basically being done by people for the people. Yeah. So where, where science is going, it's not tested. We can't back this, which they are starting to because the pharmaceutical industry is now patenting it. Um, yeah, so it will help. But I guess what I, what I want to say to you, Johnny, is it'll, it'll help. But unless you're, it'll help you get to a stage in your life where you feel like you've got enough resilience to then attack your own demons, yeah? So it's not going to fix your demons, but it's going to help you get to a platform where you go, fuck, actually, I feel quite good today. Fuck, I'm going to actually go to a Pilates class. Yeah, whereas for the last six months, you're like, oh, I can't get there. Things are so, life shit, I can't. But that's what dope did to me when I did it every day for six years, you know? Oh, fuck, really? Yeah, it just made me, like, reclusive, horribly introverted. I mean, it expanded my mental capacity. I read a lot. I watched heaps of documentaries. I became knowledgeable in a lot of things, history, <laughs> <laughs> so things like that, I devoured knowledge, mm. but on a social perspective, I was completely ostracized. I was, was very scared to go out and it got serious where I'd pull the phone out of my hook and draw my curtains. So that's because when you heat THC up, um, over 120 degrees, yeah, it becomes psychoactive and it works a whole different, works in a whole different, um, way in your body it goes straight to your brain yeah this medicinally um talks to all the receptors from wow. your feet to your head to the organs to your um and that there's just so much they don't know how do you ingest it um well there's different ways so you can they make they extract oils thc um, oil um not only which is the active ingredient n n cbd yeah, there's lots of different cannabinoids that they're extracting. So for different for different things. So THC is one of them. CBD, CBG, CBN. Oh, wow. All these different cannabinoids uh, for different ailments. Didn't know dope had so many acronyms. Oh, dude, it's acronym central, and that's just because Aussies love a good acronym, don't they? Of the world, all Aussies. Mm. Yeah. Lol. <laughs> Lol. Um. So yeah. When you take it as a medicine, it actually talks to your biological processes and doesn't just go straight. And it kind of, um, depending on what you're taking, it removes that psychoactive. But you can take it rectally. You can take it vaginally. You can put it in your belly button. You can take it orally and you can vape it. I think we stuck to Gatorade bottles <laughs> <laughs> and uh, garden hoses, which made my mum irate. By the end of the year, she had like a one meter hose left. <laughs> oh, it's, right. I just bought a bong from off your tree. Yeah. <laughs> Did it. Well, anyway, so like I say. All right. So. It could go on for ages. I think I'm in, I'm, I'm in the deep end here with the science. So I'll focus on the business side of it. How is, how are you working for a company selling cannabis when it cannabis is illegal what are you exploiting a loophole without going into too much too much detail what's the time i'm very mindful of the time it's quarter past eight <gasps> we've got to go have me back all right i'm sorry but i've got to support my girlfriend who's up on stage mm. oh yeah we're going to see jess pierman who was on this podcast as well mm. So uh, basically, you can't talk about it, but it's a loophole. Is that a yes or a no? No. Um, no and yes. Yes and no. Okay, and so that's a superposition of answers there. Both. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> yes, no, maybe. No, uh, no, because the companies I work for are 
have been doing have been fighting the mission for a while, and I think it's understood that they're there to help the people, and not it's not a recreational, it's not underground, it's not black market, it's not you know they're actually there to help people, and so they're kind of left alone. But there's still like the surfing we were talking about, nice bring around. There's an etiquette, so you've got to work within that etiquette yeah of mm. whatever the fuck that is medical or, guidelines or whatever the yeah it's like yeah they know so you're not working that, out the back of an off your tree shop no they know that these businesses are operating the law um they're choosing not to swan dive them because they can see the benefits but also they're kind of going you know you have to respect this as well. So do you think, I know we're running out of time. Do you think it's a matter of time before we legalize marijuana in this country and yeah. follow? Yeah. It's going to happen within the next 10, 20 years or no, maybe not 20 years. I think we need a generation to die out first until I'm in my forties. I need to get to 60, 70 before you see enough of a populace to swing a vote. Yeah. Uh, look, I hope so. There's enough people backing it now. I speak to 97 year olds that mm. are like going, yeah, I'm fucking I'm sick of <laughs> the medical system. Like you should be, you've been in it for a fucking long time, 97. Mm. But you know, on that, on the back of that now in Australia, cause we're very backward. I mean, the UK would be miles ahead of us on some things medically, but now they're um, supporting MDMA and psilocybin assisted um, psychotherapy. Not Mic legally yet. Not legally yet. Yeah, I yeah. know. I've heard about microdosing psilocybin, which is, I can understand. I can't understand MDMA because that's a long chain chemical compound made in a lab that um, was used in the fifties and sixties to um, combat depression and divorce. And of course, you could imagine when they gave it to couples, they got back together again and chewed chewing gum and talked the shit for like twelve hours. But then after that, after a week, they were like divorced again um so it didn't really work but um yeah microdosing psilocybin they reckon is um for, for good. trauma good for oh uh, yeah i don't know enough about it but mind medicine mind medicine australia if you're into it look them up they've got some incredible stuff happening free like webinars and stuff all um, right mind medicine australia mind medicine australia right. and if you are watching this and you you know you want to kind of look into cbd look up the church of ubuntu or green light health who's ubuntu ubuntu is in newcastle church of ubuntu is that an african god he's a, he was yeah the no it's ubuntu is kind of like the um it's an it's an african term it's an ethos or a way of life where we all share yeah something like that you know it's yeah, the it's, ultimate the ultimate health or yeah. the ultimate um it's like putting selfishness aside for the good of everyone around you, know. you so you all move forward yeah i told you I'm, well i'm a tripper myself but i don't really i'm more aligned like i'm with science i don't know i'm like i'm, I'm you know. I want to step into the pool, but I love science too much to go too crazy into that. You could tap in. I could tap in. You could yeah. have a one night stand. I'm interested in the. Yeah, I, I found it. What, what you said just about THC. Once it's heated to 120, it becomes psychoactive. So that explains a lot why um, you're not getting spiritual healing from uh, Gatorade bong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and why it just speaks to 7-Eleven. I'm glad um, I could help with yeah. with that. <laughs> But anyway, uh, we have to go to a stand-up club to do a gig for the Comedy Festival. Lainey, thanks for coming in. Pleasure, as always. And your book is called Electro Girl. Where yeah. can they get that? Um, just go to my website, electrogirl.com.au. Um, or you could stalk me on, uh, I don't know, actually. Just, yeah, go to the website, electrogirl.com.au, and um, hit me up there. All right, thanks. Peace out.